Hello and welcome to the week ahead with IG. I'm Angela Barnes. Well, there's a lot to get through, plenty of economic data in the week ahead. But just to remind you, it's a bank holiday in the UK on Monday, 28th of August. So take note that UK equities, index futures, soft commodities and interest rates will be closed. And all the full details are on the IG website for that. So let's start in Australia then on Tuesday, uh, sorry, on Monday, because we'll get the latest preliminary retail sales figures through for July. We'll also on Monday have the release of the Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index for August. And then also on Tuesday in Germany, we will have GFK consumer confidence data for September. Consumer confidence is expected to come in at minus 23.9 points, lower than the previous figure of minus 24.4 heading into August. Well, let me just bring up the DAX chart, Germany's DAX, because it has been enjoying a rally which ended, as you can see, on Thursday. Um, losses in the construction technology and software sectors led shares lower. But if I just switch that now to the intraday chart and we can see that sentiment has actually been picking up today, though, despite figures confirming Germany's economy stagnated in the second quarter. Final official data has confirmed and that adding to a bleak outlook as the country battles an industrial slowdown and stubborn inflation, of course, like many. So moving on in the US, we will have the S&P Case-Shiller home price data, as well as job opening numbers, CB consumer confidence data and API crude oil inventories. A busy day in the US as well on the data front there. And then on Wednesday, back to Germany, we'll have con the consumer latest consumer price index figures back to the US as well. Then we will have this time a second estimate on Q2 GDP figures, as well as ADB employment change, pending home sales and EIA crude oil inventory. So a lot to look out for. Then on Thursday in Japan, we'll have industrial production figures and retail sales. In China, we'll also have manufacturing and services PMI data. Then in Germany as well, more data, retail sales and unemployment figures. We'll see how consumer spending then has hit the high street and online retailers. And then we'll go back to the US. We also have the latest core PCR, PCE price index data and initial jobless claims. And then on Friday, the 1st of September, manufacturing data from China. Well, it's manufacturing PMI came in at 49.3 in July, slightly better than the expected 49.2. And then we will also have Q2 GDP figures from Canada and also US non-farm payrolls, manufacturing PMI, SM manufacturing PMI and the latest Baker Hughes oil rig count data also all on Friday. So an awful lot of economic data to take in there. So let's go now to Tasty's Tony Batista in Chicago for more on this. To, where do we position ourselves on this? What should how should investors position themselves ahead of all that economic data, Tony? Yeah, a lot of news coming out. We had a lot of news come out last week. Uh, you've got Jackson Hole, as you mentioned, for us today uh, here in the U.S. on Friday. We've got basically an unchanged week, if you could believe that, with all that news. We started uh, by measured by the S&P 500 on Monday, just about exactly where we're opening today on Friday. So if you were to expect, uh, when, you, when you least expect it, expect it. Maybe today's the day you get a little bit of movement in the market. It's been a little bit pent up uh, action here. Volatility has been, been kind of soft a, a little bit here. Volatility uh, lower than where it was on Monday. You would expect that with uh, not too much movement in the U.S. We had some good back and forth movement, but not too, uh, too much in the way of direction. Uh, you mentioned oil uh, sitting right at $80 right now. Also had a had a little bit of a weak start to the beginning of the of the week here and uh, is now basically where it was on Monday. So we've had a lot to digest. The markets digest a lot of it. I don't see any kind of direction, but we've had a nice uh, couple of weeks here in the U.S. market uh, to the upside. We've had some stocks uh, like NVIDIA and, and others that have done real well. We've had other stocks. You mentioned UBS uh, has earnings coming out on the, the 31st before the market opens here in the U.S., 
that's a stock that's been leading the market, at least on the on the banking side, a $75 billion market cap stock um, that, that's really been a leader. Now, you compare that to JP Morgan, uh, which is a much bigger uh, company by, by market cap, and then Citigroup, which is a similar uh, size stock as UPS, and those two have not been leading the market. So we're going to need some good data out of UPS uh, to, to keep that sector afloat. They've been a leader. Tony, thank you. And on the note there, you said about the Jackson Hole Symposium, I just wanted um, to go back to you on that, because last sure. year it caused a bit of a market shock wave. Is Wall Street expecting the same again or anything from this event that could do the same? Yeah, uh, hard to tell. I mean, it, it, it's almost like the market's telling two different stories here. Um, you know, the, the, they're talking about rates, uh, you know, basically being uh, unchanged, uh, no change to the to the interest rates here in the U.S., but if you look at the 30-year long-end bond trading around 119.23, um, that's been quite weak uh, the last two weeks or so. Unchanged for this week, much like the market, but very weak the last two weeks and even month. As bonds go lower, rates typically go higher. They have an inverse relationship to rates. So maybe the 30-year um, might catch a little bit of, a, a, of an uptick here, maybe surprise the market. OK, well, Tony, stay with us, because I'd like to just come back to you with one more question um, when we go mm -hmm. through some corporate earnings ahead. So if you could please just stay with us there on the line, Tony. Thank you very much for your insights so far. They're excellent as always. So moving on, a busy week ahead on the corporate front, as I said, equally like it was on the economic front, with quite a few earnings releases ahead. Starting on Tuesday, the 29th, we've got Bunzel's half year earnings leading the way on the 29th of August. We've also got Q3 earnings from HP, Hewlett Packard Q3 results on Tuesday as well. And we'll also see how Best Buy fared with its Q2 earnings too. Then on Wednesday, we have Prudential half year results, Delivery Hero half year earnings on Wednesday too. And then Salesforce with Q2 results as well is what we're watching this week. Just to quickly pull up the Salesforce chart for you, if I may, um, I just wanted to show you this because you can see its share price has climbed since Janu January, actually up about 60%. Um, the US software company gave an update, an upbeat profit forecast in March and doubled its share repurchase program, which has obviously cheered investors. So we'll be keeping across its latest earnings update for you on Wednesday. And then moving on on Thursday, UBS Group will also release its Q2 earnings on Thursday, 31st of August. The investment bank and financial services company is continuing to integrate its rival Credit Suisse following that $3.25 billion acquisition pushed through by the Swiss government in March. Uh, we also have Q3 earnings from Broadcom, from Dell Technologies, Dollar General, and then on Friday, no earnings to report. So a very busy calendar on the corporate front as well. If I can just go back to you again, Tony, you mentioned UBS to us there. Is there anything else on the corporate calendar that's spiking your interest that you'll be particularly watching? Uh, no, you mentioned Salesforce just a moment ago, C CRM, um, uh, almost 5% expected move for earnings uh, on the larger side uh, for, for CRM. So there could be some nervousness there in CRM. OK, brilliant. Well, Tony, thanks ever so much for joining us on the week ahead. It's always great to have you on the show. And thanks, to everyone else, for watching IGTV. Do keep across our YouTube channel, our Instagram, Twitter account for more updates. Thanks for watching. I'm Angela Barnes.